Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by fictional writer Stephen Murray. Stephen is based in Las Vegas. He has four self-published works of fiction. All of his novels are free of language, violence, and sexual content so anybody can read them. Stephen's novels have received five-star reviews from his readers, as well as positive reviews from the judges at the Writer's Digest Award contest. So we're going to be talking to him about his books, as well as self-publishing. Stephen, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's a pleasure, Curtis, and thank you so much for inviting me on your show. And I'd like to thank your listeners for tuning in. Why don't you start off by giving us all a little bit of background about yourself? Sure. Well, as you can tell, I'm not originally from America. I was born in England, and as a young child, my family emigrated to Southern Africa. We lived in different countries throughout the southern half of Africa, When I finished school, I went back to England and I lived in London for seven years. And then I got the opportunity of a job in Southern California in Los Angeles. And so I moved there and I was 27 years there before moving to Las Vegas. And I've lived in Las Vegas now for the last 18 years. And my career has been in the computer software industry. I've had my own business. I've traveled extensively throughout the world. And I'm now moving into retirement and enjoying writing novels. So what inspired you to start writing? You know, you're a computer software person. So what made you want to start writing and how did you get started? I first set out, Curtis, to write a book on my travel experiences. It was going to be like an autobiography because I've traveled to almost 40 different countries throughout the world on all five continents. I've lived on three continents and I thought it might make an interesting read because I've interfaced with all these different customs and cultures from all these different countries. And that's what I started out to write. But when I finished that, the publisher said that people aren't reading biographies unless it's somebody well known or famous. And if I wanted to write, I needed to write more fiction and more for the female reading audience, because women are the ones buy the books. And as I'd written my biography, I discovered this real joy of writing. And so I thought I'm going to take this as a challenge and see if I can write women's fiction, knowing nothing about it, of course. And that's what got me started. So I notice your books are in several different genres. Tell us about the genres that you write in and why you decided to write in multiple genres. Well, the the first book that got published when I was told to write for women's fiction, and I had no idea what to write. And I was searching for an idea. And I came across a wedding chapel, you know, where the marriage capital of the world here in Las Vegas. And I had some friends visiting from Belgium. They were business clients, actually, and they wanted to go to a wedding chapel. And as I was with them that day, we met a couple that was waiting to go and get married. And I wondered why they were here and where their friends and family were and why they were just by themselves. And I suddenly thought, there's my book. So I wrote the first fictional book, it's mainstream fiction, it's called The Chapel of Eternal Love, Wedding Stories from Las Vegas. And it's a series of short stories, they're woven together into a novel, but the reader spends a day with the wedding organizer, Rosemary, and you meet all the couples and why they have come to Las Vegas, why 
why they have fallen in love, what's their reason for getting married. And it's just a fun, cute, easy read. But I didn't plan on publishing it. And by that time, by the time I'd finished that, I'd met some other authors and they were writing different things. And I thought, well, now I want to have a stab at a murder mystery. So I wrote a murder mystery and called Murder Aboard the Queen Elizabeth II. And I took that to get published. And the gentleman said, what else have you written? I said, a book about a wedding chapel. And he said, oh, you've got to get that published before your murder mystery. So the wedding chapel mainstream fiction came out. And then people want to know what happened to the couples in that fictional book. So I then had to write a sequel saying what happened to all the couples five years down the road. And then I got my murder mystery book out. And then I thought I wanted to try something different. I think it's because writing has to be a challenge. And I like the idea of challenging book subjects. And the, so the fourth book, Discreetly Yours, is a crime fiction book. And the one that's being edited right now, it's a nice, warm and fuzzy Christmas novel. So I just enjoy the challenge curse, I think, of writing different genres. It makes the brain work a little bit harder, I think. So you mentioned that you had a publisher, but you decided to self-publish. What made you decide to switch from having a publisher to self-publishing? Well, actually, the, the gentleman who I saw, it wasn't a publisher per se, it was a gentleman that helped put books together. He, His company does editing. They do the typesetting. They do the cover design and all of that stuff. And I was very green when I first took the my, my books there. I really had never met any authors or anything like that. And the gentleman I spoke to, you know, he seemed very knowledgeable. And as he said, you know, if I go to a traditional publisher, it could be three years before your book actually sees the light of day. And then, of course, you have to write all these query letters, you know, to get accepted by a traditional publisher. And I thought, you know, I'm not too sure as I want to go down that road. I don't want to spend time just writing letters and letters and letters and possibly getting, you know, a bunch of rejections. I, I had no idea. So I just thought, I'm going to go the self-publishing route. And I felt comfortable with the gentleman that did the cover design and the typesetting and the editing. He had a good group of staff there, and they did a mighty fine job. And the, the one advantage, I think, of self-publishing, Curtis, and in my view anyway, is that I do own all the rights to it if ever any of them get made into a TV movie or in the case of Chapel Books, a TV miniseries, I own all the rights and I can call the shots. And I'm not too sure whether that holds true in traditional publishing. I think one would have to read the contract very, very carefully. But at least I know with the novels that I've got out there, if anything develops into them, I at least own all the rights and have some say in what what goes on. Well, speaking of that, talk about the advantages and disadvantages of self-publishing, as well as how difficult is it to market books as a self-publishing author? It's very, very tough, Curtis. I have to say it's not easy. Although I'm not too sure whether publishers do that much for people anymore. I, I'm sure if it's a well-known writer like Stephen King or somebody of that nature, John Grisham or Daniel Steele, uh, they probably help set up book signings all over the country and what have you. I'm not too sure whether they do that for the unknown author. When my, when my first book did come out, The Chapel of Eternal Love, I was totally green, of course, and I thought, well, just by sending out flyers to everybody I know, through five degrees of separation, it would be on the top of the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> but of course, it doesn't work quite like that. And here I sat with all these books, and it was like, well, now what do I do? 
So the tough part is what makes it so tough is you don't have anybody behind you. You've got to go out and do your own marketing. I, I have to reach out to the, the bookshops here, the Barnes and Nobles and the, the other book stop, shops that we have here in Las Vegas, see if they'll have me in for book signings and set them all up. I have to think outside of the box because we don't have too many bookstores here in Las Vegas. And my books are very conducive towards seniors. They seem to like the books and I've managed to find quite a niche in senior centers going around talking about the books. I talk about the background and I give a little talk about each of the books and the genres and they buy a lot of the books and I go to other places too, like uh, before Valentine's Day, for example, one year I went to a beauty salon. It's a huge beauty salon close by to me and I figured, well, all the ladies are going to be there having their nails done, their faces done, their hair done and so on and so forth. And I just went into the beauty salon and said, could I come and do a book signing here? And they said, sure, come on down and down I went. So you do have to do a lot of the marketing, but I have to say that's part of the fun of it, Curtis. It so happens, you know, I'm not doing it for a living, I'm doing it for a hobby. And I happen to enjoy that side of it. It's a whole new world, it's been a lot of fun. And it's been a very interesting journey. I've met a lot of wonderful, wonderful people along the way. It's been amazing. Has anything ever came out of any one of your books or any kind of prospects of something becoming of them? Well, in terms of a TV show or a right. TV miniseries? No. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, do talk on, on some podcasts. I've been on quite a few podcasts. And I'm always hoping that somebody from Hallmark or Netflix or something like that is tuning in and think, oh, that sounds like an interesting book. Let me reach out to him. I probably should or could be more aggressive in reaching out in that area, but I haven't done so so far. And I'm, I'm too busy writing and doing the signings, being on podcasts and making up flyers. I have a monthly newsletter and I, I still work, you know, not, not full time, but I still have my computer business. So... Well, who, who, is, who is your favorite author? My favorite author is the English author Charles Dickens. And I, I know he's a classical author, but I just think his characters, they all have wonderful names. You know, you, th you think of A Christmas Carol and the character of Ebenezer Scrooge. I mean, the name Scrooge just conjures up miserly and mean, and I think of Oliver Twist and Fagin, you know, just the name Fagin sounds like he's a real character. And of course, some of it could have happened to be that Charles Dickens was born in the same town that I was born. Obviously, I was born many years later after he was, but maybe because we're from the same town of Portsmouth, England, that um, there's some, some bond or connection there, I don't, but I just do happen to like Charles Dickens and more contemporary. I, I like John Grisham. I like his style of writing and his books that and stories. They're so intriguing. Well, tell us the hardest part about being an author, you know, writing, marketing, all that stuff. Tell us the toughest part. <sighs> toughest part. I think is, for me, the toughest part, the most challenging part, but in a way an intriguing and enjoyable part, is the character development of, of the female characters. The last book that I wrote, Discreetly Yours, it's about three very highly sophisticated, elegant, classy ladies that work for an exclusive escort agency in Las Vegas. And they plot to murder the guy that runs it because he, he treats them so badly. And they try and come up with the perfect crime. I have to tell your listeners up front, I did no research on this book. 
with the escorts. It's all imagination. And the toughest part was trying to imagine these three ladies get inside their characters, get inside their minds in their way of thinking. That, for me, is the toughest part. And it's and it has been through all the books. I use the last book as, a, as an example because the, the three female characters there, they all have to have their own distinctive personalities and they have to have characteristics that make you want to like them and at the same time be repulsed in a way by what they're doing, you know, the, the crime they're plotting to get rid of. So that for me is very tough, but it's very rewarding when I get comments back saying they like the character development, that the characters were credible. It's very rewarding, but it's very tough to get to that point for me anyway. I don't know what it's like for other male authors writing for female writing female characters, but for me it's certainly certainly a challenge, no question. You talked about for that book you didn't do any research, but when you write other books, your other books that you have written, how much research do you put into them? Actually I I I don't, Curtis. All the books are totally total imagination, every single one of them. The first book, The Chapel, yes, I did get the inspiration from just happening to be at the wedding chapel that day and talking to that one couple waiting to get married. And when I drove home, I thought, gosh, why are they here? Why? What made them come to Las Vegas? What makes anyone come to Las Vegas just to get married? And all the stories tumbled into my mind. And I never, I have never interviewed a couple per se who got married at a wedding chapel, or I've never interviewed a wedding organizer or anything like that. It's all 100% imagination. It's, I just like using my mind and just letting my mind wander and create the environments. You know, some of the wedding chapels here in Las Vegas now, it's, they're almost like a McDonald's. It's like a drive-through, <laughs> you know, where you hand over the license and, you know, the next thing you get the certificate kind of thing. And it removes all the romance. And even though my books aren't romantic, they're not romance per se, I do like them to be <laughs> a little bit more romantic than a drive-through wedding chapel, you know, if you know what I mean. I definitely know what you mean. Do you have any current projects or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? I'm working on a Christmas novel, something, again, totally different. And it's a very, very warm and fuzzy Christmas novel. And I have it completed. It's currently being edited. The book cover is being designed. I'm hoping to send it to the typesetters next week. And... Hopefully it will be out sometime in the middle of October. It's called Discovering the Christmas Spirit. And I stumbled across the idea two years ago in July. I had just published Discreetly Yours about the three escorts and the crime fiction. And I needed a break, I think, from the seedy side of Las Vegas and from murders and escorts and all things that are unsavory in that world. And I just happened to be flicking through the channels one night on TV after the book came out, and I stumbled across Hallmark, and they had their Christmas in July. And I just kind of got swept up in that story, and I thought, you know, that's what I need to do next. Write a nice, warm, lovable, fun Christmas book that will be totally different from discreetly yours and from anything else I've written. So that's what I've been working on for the last two years, and hopefully that will be out, as I said, this year. Well, throw out your contact information. If you have a website, how can we purchase your books and your social media links? Each of the current books, they have their own website, but I do have one global website. It's called... The website is www 
author Stephen S T E P H E N Murray M U R R A Y dot com, and it will. It's my author website. It'll tell you more about myself, my background, and then it has links to all of the books where you can go and read the customer reviews, professional reviews, synopses of the books, and learn more about them. And they can also be purchased, of course, on any one of the sites. You can purchase all of them or just one of them uh, if you want signed copies. I'm more than happy to do that and get them out. They're also available on Amazon.com. And you can also go into any, if they go to the author website and see the titles of all of the books, they can also go into their local Barnes & Noble or any bookstore and order them through them because they're all distributed through Ingram Spark. And that goes across the world, incidentally, you know, somebody's living in Australia or England or Italy, wherever, they can just walk into any bookstore and order them. Do you have any final thoughts before we close it out? I would just like to say to anybody out there who is listening, who is thinking of writing a book or in the middle of writing a book and they're not too sure where to go, um, they're nervous about it, I would just say, go for it, make it happen. It'll take you on a journey that you've never imagined. I certainly never imagined it. And self-publishing, there is some upfront costs. You've got to pay for your own website and your own editing and so on and so forth. But it's a very worthwhile journey. And I would say, go for it, make your dream come true. And I thank you, Curtis, for inviting me on your show. It's been an absolute pleasure. And again, I appreciate your listening, listeners tuning in. I hope they enjoyed it as much as I did. Well, we appreciate you as well. Ladies and gentlemen, www.authorstephenmurray.com. Also, be sure to follow, rate, review, and share after listening. Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. Stephen, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure, Curtis. Thank you for having me. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.